Well then, Your Majesty, have you made your decision? All of you, Chris, awaits your word, for your actions this day could herald a bright new era for our kingdom. In fact, I understand that Duke Zaldric's research into new uses for Runelands is his making great strides. I'm endlessly impressed at your ability to vomit out nonsense you don't believe in. Oh, you're a politician born and bred. Or perhaps merely a swindler. How many times must I remind you that you are here as an observer, Countess? Your Majesty. In light of the Countess's continuous interruptions, I suggest you have her removed. Your father would not have tolerated such impudence from a guest. Of that, I am certain. But... If anyone is removed here, it will be you, Lord Harlan. What? How dare you? You're up, Noah. Go get him. Lord Harlan is a traitor who has conspired to sell out Eucharist to Dukes Aldrich for his own personal gain. Traitor? Uh, personal gain? What? Who do you think you are? The fact you cobbled together some pathetic army out of defeated troops gives you no right to speak to me so. Unless you come bearing proof of this outrageous claim, I suggest you take your seat! My proof is this contract sent by Duke Zaldric to Lord Harlan. It says, and I quote, Should Lord Harlan secure Eucharist's surrender, he shall retain his wealth and status and be given high standing after the dissolution of the Sheerith dynasty. It's all right here on the page. This, um, well, the handwriting does seem to match the letter I received from the Dukes. You damnable varlet! Where did you get that? Oh! Ah, oh, no, no, you, you see here. Uh... It seems you are familiar with this document, Lord Harlan. N no, of course not. You betrayed me, Lord Harlan. Betrayed your king and your kingdom. Everything I have done was for the benefit of you, Chris. You must believe me. I... Cassius! 
Guards! Prepare the special chamber for Lord Harlan. I have a great many questions to ask him. You have it all wrong! I am no traitor! In fact, had your father still reigned, this need never have happened! But instead, we have you, Yuma! You! And you, Chris, cannot persevere with an heir so foolish and feckless! You are driving our kingdom to ruin! What choice did I have but to ally with the Empire? Get him out of here! Now! Do you understand now, Yuma? I mean, your majesty? Now that you've seen the contract, are Duke's Aldrich's motives not exceedingly clear? The man has no intention of allowing the Sheerith dynasty to continue. <sighs> Such treachery. If the Dukes was willing to do away with the royal family, what would he have done to us? I choose to do all in my power to help Commander Noah of the Alliance. He's a man I can count on. And I will fight at his side. Oh. Apologies, Periel. Apologies, Lord Counselors. I just... I need a little more time. There might yet be truth to what Harlan said. Oof. Well, so much for that. I knew Yuma struggled with decisions, but I had no idea he was this bad. <sighs> Still, we've done all we can for now. Lord Harlan is in custody, so I will spend the night here. Uh, the rest of you may make yourselves comfortable. Just stay out of the back chamber. Oh, come on! I bet there's rows of beds in there! You can spare one! Fine. But just the one. Noah. Are you all by yourself? I am. They changed the guards around this time, which gives me an opportunity to slip away. It's been my chance to go on little adventures ever since I was a child. Uh, not that I've ever left the palace grounds or anything. <laughs> that would be much too scary. In fact, this right here is about the extent of my adventuring zeal. I spoke to Melrich and learned of how you and Periel snuck into Harlan's manor to secure the contract. Periel really trusts you, doesn't she? No, more than that. She relies on you. 
how I envy that. Doesn't she rely on you too? I mean, you're the first person she turned to when Galdia attacked, and she's still appealing to you now. She must really trust you. I would be delighted if that were the case, but is it really me she was counting on? Or did she merely turn to me because I happen to be the person on the throne? I adore Periel. The way she's always spoken her mind, even when we were children. Despite growing up in circumstances not unlike mine, she's never afraid to be herself and do what she wants. She's ever pushing forward. Well, I'm from a small village, so I can't imagine what you've been through, but you look like a fighter to me. Is that not the case? Oh, heavens no. I'm worthless. Everyone thinks so, and they're quite right. Oh, I made a few clumsy attempts when I first inherited the throne, but I was never able to rule skillfully as my father did. And now, at the time of my country's greatest crisis, I still can't make up my mind. Instead of deciding, I fixate on all the tragedy my decisions might cause and simply freeze. Harlan had the right of it. I'm a feckless fool of a king. Who would ever follow a ruler like me? I just... That isn't true! That just isn't true! You aren't a bad king at all, your majesty! What? You are absolutely and completely wrong about yourself, and you mistake your kindness for weakness. I know how hard you work at being king. I know better than anyone, so please don't speak ill of yourself. It's everyone else's loss if they don't understand what a wonderful ruler you are. Thank you, Yulin. But I will never live up to my father. There's wisdom in her words, your majesty. People have you wrong. Indeed, you have yourself wrong. Now, I grant you may not currently be ruling with the skill and finesse of your father. But you're holding yourself up to a monarch with years of experience already behind him. Surely you can see how superficial it is to compare that man to a king who has taken but the first steps of his reign. A fledgling knight is no match for a hardened veteran. And yet, the youngster possesses something the veteran does not. A future. And I would not have you discard yours so lightly, my king. Oh, Melrich. You, Lynn? Oh, uh, forgive me, your majesty. Uh, I was dreadfully out of line to speak to you like that. I will accept any punishment you see fit. And your punishment is to tell me the truth. Do you really believe I can become a good king? <gasps> of course I do. You will be a, a kind king, and a great one, I I'm sure of it. Thank you. I will, or at least I shall try to. I cannot express what an honor it is to fight alongside a man of your esteem, General Goldwyn. Mm -hmm. If I may, General, I hear we'll be entering Eucharist territory soon. When do you anticipate being able to report our victory to Dukes Aldrich? 
I must contemplate how best to compose the message. It is folly to contrive victories from unfought battles. A warrior must approach every enemy with equal sincerity. But who could Eucharist field who has any hope of victory against you? General Cassius is a steady hand who commands the love of his men, and I hear the kingdom is home to another formidable mind as well. And also... Yes? I take to the battlefield for our Emperor. Despite the great pains Aldrich went through to convince His Excellency of this campaign's merit, I do not fight for the Dukes. Oh, good morning, all. I take it you spent the night here? Guys, you are not gonna believe this, Periel! <laughs> Loose lips, darling. Come, Noah, we're leaving. Announcing His Majesty, King Yuma. Have you reached a decision, sire? If you require a messenger to go to Duke's Aldrich, I am yours to command. This is it. What's it going to be? I come bearing urgent news. Your Majesty, it seems an Imperial Expeditionary Force has been sighted. It is under the command of General Goldwyn, and outnumbers our army two to one. Double our numbers, and General Goldwyn! The man is said to be invincible. Uh. Your Majesty! I have always been a worthless man, Periel. I am incapable of making decisions and paralyzed with fear of how others might view me. I have ever been a coward. I acknowledge this. General Cassius? Yes, my king. Melrich? Your Majesty. For a period of two weeks, beginning now, I entrust to the two of you the entirety of my royal authority. You are to make every decision, for I have no doubt you are more capable of selecting the right choices than I. Call it a coward's conviction if it please you, regardless, it is the best decision I can muster. What folly is this? Has His Majesty taken leave of his senses? Royal authority to a mere general and a lecturer at the studium? Say the word, Your Majesty, and we lords are ready to lead in your stead. The both of you must refuse this. It will plunge the kingdom into chaos. Folly from your fool of a king, yet all the more reason to do it. Pitiful I may be, but I beg of you to save our kingdom. But... 
Are you quite certain? After all, what's to stop the General and myself from eliminating you should we come to enjoy this little taste of power? If that is your choice, then so be it. Were you to do such a thing, I believe it would be for the sake of the kingdom. Your Majesty. Long have I sworn my service and loyalty to House Shireth, Your Majesty. But now, I pledge it anew to you, Yuma Shireth, the man before whom I now take the knee. I shall answer the trust you have placed in me with all of my heart and ability. I do not know if my talents are worthy of the faith you place in them, Your Majesty. In fact, it speaks to their inadequacy that I have so clearly misjudged you. And for that, I must atone. Whatever shreds of wit and talent I still possess, I swear to you. As if any of this gives us a chance against the Empire! Your Majesty, it's not too late. We can still draft a letter of intent to Jukes Eldrick and... General Cassius. Any hope of successfully defending this kingdom will require the full efforts of her people and the full unity of her spirit. The army will be mustered, and the realm's efforts devoted entirely to its defense. Any who choose to publicly object to His Majesty's wishes will be executed on the spot. Mm -hmm. I'm not certain such jubilant optimism is appropriate. As General Cassius noted, it will require all the strength you, Chris, can muster to have even a chance of victory. And we'll be right beside you. Agreed. This is everything we've been striving for. Then allow me to formally request the support of the Alliance. You shall have it and more. We'll return to the inn and have Janequist beat the muster drums. Yeah. Gotcha. Perfect catch. Yep. Uh. Yes! Yep. Crap! Yep. Come on, come on! Perfect catch. Yep. Uh. 
It got away. Yep. Uh. Yes. Hup. Gotcha. Perfect catch. Yep. Uh, perfect catch. I shall contact Emir and have him commence preparations straight away, milady. Send me. I'll get your message there safe. Shall I set this in motion, Commander? Maybe hold on a second? Understood. I shall be here when you are ready. Are you ready for the next step, Commander? Do it. Uh, yup! Let's go beat him like a dirty carpet! They are certainly in for a surprise. The tyranny of the Empire needs to stop here and now. You ready, Noah? I think Periel already took off for the palace. Let us review our strategy. We face a war of attrition. Unfortunately, Haishan was not built to be easily defended. Therefore, we must meet the Imperial host on the field and strive to buy time while minimizing our casualties. 
We leave this in your capable hands, General Cassius. His Majesty's troops are kith and kin to me. I'll not let a single man die in vain. I trust messengers have been dispatched to Norster and Kinan? They have, but neither will act until we prove our mettle, which is why this first battle is pivotal. Our enemy is a general both seasoned and clever, and he will not rely on superior numbers alone to deliver victory. We must whittle away at their strength now, then turn the war of attrition which follows to our advantage. Which is where we come in! Uh, right? Correct. We are counting on your ambush to throw the battlefield into disorder. Do not let us down, Commander Noah. We won't. We're ready. General Cassius, Melrich, Noah, pray bring us victory and return home safely. Thank you, Your Majesty. If my projections are correct, this battle may be over far sooner than we all dare hope. Projections? Hmm. Reporting, sir! The Imperial Army has arrived and is forming up just where you said they would! Then we'd best get started. Are you ready, Commander? Let's do this. Yourselves. This day we fight for our homes, for our king, and for the future of our country! The Imperial Army's here. So it's war, then. I assumed their forces would throw down their arms and flee, rather than take the field for such a weakling king. Perhaps they found a more inspiring leader. Fortune smiles upon us this day, General Goldwyn. The honors of a battlefield victory are ours for the taking. It is an honor for you to lead my vanguard, Lieutenant Kessling. I expect your rune tank to earn us a great many accolades. Um, about that, sir? The rune tank isn't really designed for solo combat. It requires a lot of infantry support, so... I was not speaking to you, soldier. Well, young Sian, what do you say? Will you fight for the glory of your house? As you command, sir. Hildy, Valentine, gather what troops you can. At once, Lieutenant. 
By decree of the Emperor, you may submit peacefully to Galtia's glory, or be crushed beneath her heel. Time. Give the signal. Looks like we're up. Let's go! Tactician signal. Come on, boys. Let's honor our contract and show these imps the color of their own guts. An ambush? What impudence! This is the moment we've been waiting for. Advance! All forces, attack! Shields up! Stand your ground! I will deal with this ambush myself. Are the troops holding up? We're ready to move whenever. Though if you ask me, that move should be to turn and run. You forget yourself, Second Lieutenant. <laughs>
yourselves together, you sloppy fools! His Grace the Dukes is expecting a great victory from me! You're just a stain on my sword! Are we ready? Oh, yeah. She's in a great mood today. Enemy in sight, sir. On your order, Lieutenant. Attack! Have you be quiet there? Thank you. At last, some damn order! Now form up and prepare for the next! If you have finally regained control of your troops, General Chapel, then prepare to withdraw. We are finished here. What? Learning the true strength of our foe is victory enough for the day. It has not come without cost, but to persist further would only result in needless bloodshed. We maintain the upper hand and are in no particular rush. Additionally, the sun has begun its descent and I've no desire to fight in darkness on unfamiliar terrain. We will withdraw. Retreat! Fall back, you dogs! Woohoo! Look at him run! Nice job, Noah. <laughs> you sure showed him, cousin. A victory on the Alliance's very first deployment! Let's not press our luck. An overzealous attempt to pursue General Goldwyn may end poorly. All units, fall in! You fought bravely and well this day, and you, Chris, thanks you for it. Now, we return to Haishan triumphant! Importantly, everyone is safe. Is this victory real? I can scarce believe it. 
It is only one battle behind us, Your Majesty. The war ahead will be nothing to celebrate. It disheartens me that our ambush did little to face General Goldwyn's troops. He truly is the military titan, they say. Yeah, even I've heard of the guy. So I guess today didn't amount to much more than an ugly introduction. Let's not diminish the significance of forcing a retreat in our first battle. I've already made arrangements to inform the other members of the League, and trust the news will change their countenance for the better. If I may, who are those other reinforcements, and why did you not mention them? I'm guessing you mean me. Allow me to introduce Captain Bernard Sawad of the White Sands Mercenary Company. I reached out to him some time ago to secure his services. Oh, and if you're worried about the mercenary part, I promise you this. A Sawad never breaks a contract. You hired these sellswords, Melrich? I managed to divert some funds their way, yes. A bit from the Royal Treasury, and more that was earmarked for the Studium and Archives. I figured the forthwith confiscation of Harlan's estate would sufficiently refresh our coffers. <laughs> well, I suppose I did give you my royal authority, but I'm still pleased to see you wielding it with such wisdom. Just do see the ledgers end up balanced, yes? Don't spare it another thought, Your Majesty. That's something I'm quite confident I can manage. Uh, yep, still incorrigible. <laughs> something on your mind, Sane? Hmm. You're wondering what will happen if Eucharist falls, aren't you? Its downfall seems inevitable, considering the League's lack of unity. Just like Duke Saldrick wants, I bet. You're thinking about it again. In part. But mostly I'm just wondering what I'm doing here. I intended to make a name for myself and House Kessling as an Imperial officer. I believed that was the right thing. It's what I thought he would do. Your brother? Yes. But now I'm not sure about anything anymore. So where does that leave me? Sorry to interrupt the boy talk, fellas. Did I miss anything spicy? Look, we've all got them. Ties, I mean. Obligations. I know all about yours, Sane. Little by little, they tighten around your neck until one day you wake up and realize you're wearing a noose. All part of growing up, I suppose. At these times, the times where you have to weigh your friends, and your loyalties, and your future. These are the moments that tell us who we are. You're young. You feel like throwing caution to the wind and doing the wrong thing for the right reason. Well, do it. This is getting a little complicated and poetic for me, but... I think I agree. Paul, Valentine, thank you both. Hildy. A messenger just arrived bearing urgent news from the homeland, Lieutenant. It's as you feared. What? How could this have happened? 
I'm still verifying the information. It's possible this is but a rumor. This is not some piece of idle gossip, man! You're telling me the Emperor has been assassinated? That is... Uh, yes, that's what I've heard. But all the more reason to swiftly complete our occupation of Haishan while we wait for further news. The late Emperor's decree still stands, after all, and His Grace the Dukes has not yet issued our next orders. The Dukes has not issued them? I... I mean nothing by it. Let us resume our efforts on the morrow. Rise and shine, Noah. The new day has dawned and everyone's gathered at the palace. Battle of attrition continues. Our ambushes in the last fight took a modest toll on the enemy, but we still remain outnumbered. This time, Noah's allied troops and the White Sands mercenaries will fight on the defensive line. Hold a keen edge out there, both of you, and be ready for anything. <laughs> if there's one thing the White Sands know, it's how to hold a keen edge. And your troops, Commander Noah? Preparation will be key. Take what time you need. 